Welcome to Mastermind with Maggie. Maggie Chula is a psychic channel for the Akashic Master Teachers. Together, they are experts on spiritual healing and helping you connect to your source of light, your soul. Join in a mastermind. Resolve your problems and create goals for the future. Build action steps that empower you to create your life in partnership with your soul wisdom. Problems can be on any subject, health and well-being, relationships, spiritual, emotional, or your connection to your soul. Manifesting your goals can be simple and easy. Join in the discussion, mastermind solutions to problems, create goals and action steps, then move forward to a life full of possibilities. We invite you to come with your problems and leave with a plan. Greetings, greetings and hello. My name is Maggie Chula, and I'm so happy you've taken the time to join me today. And I'm very excited because the topic of this podcast is From Vulnerable to Venerable with my special guest, Dawn Morningstar. Dawn is a beautiful woman who is transforming the world with her, with her words, with her wisdom, and with her grace. So have you ever had the feeling of being unworthy of love? Do you feel hopeless about your future? Do you want to make a difference in the world, but can't seem to get going? My special guest this week, Dawn Morningstar, started out life abandoned and abused as a baby. Yet her search for self-worth led her to create a movement that is helping women all over the world go from vulnerable to venerable. She chose the word venerable because it means worthy of love, honor, and respect. Dawn is a master coach who received her certification from Learning Journeys, the International Center of Coaching. She has recently published her second book, Venerable Women, Transform Ourselves, Transform the World. And she will share with us some of her observations on how you can go from vulnerable to venerable and share your light, love, and laughter in the world. You can learn more about Dawn and the Venerable Women movement at venerablewomen.com. And so join me as I welcome her right now onto the show. Good morning, Dawn. How are you? Good morning, Maggie. I am well and very, very happy and honored to share this message. So hello to everyone listening and know that our affirmation together is that you will hear and know that which will support you on your journey to live your highest and best life. Thank you for that. Thank you for starting us out that way. And <laughs> Could you just help us a little bit more so that the people can get to know you? What, what, um, I know I said that you started out abandoned and abused as a baby. Can you help us a little bit more to understand what that was? What that absolutely. Means? Yes, absolutely. And before we begin that part, I want to make it very clear that I have cleared this with my ancestors to make sure that they were comfortable with me sharing this. And they have agreed that I can share this information because it will help to elevate. They're on the other side now, and they can't really do anything more here on this earth. And so they're happy and supporting me as I share a story of transformation. And they are also letting us know that they were, um, they were uh, a part of helping with this movement for each of us. So I always like to get that part out of the way. So um, That's a good point. That's yes, good. yes, yes. And so what happened was my uh, parents were married. They met and married very, very young. Um, my mother in particular had an extremely painful childhood where she had been abused herself, um, uh, physically abused by a stepfather and when her mother found out about this abuse, put my mother in a girls' reform school and said that my mother, at age 12, had egged him on to do that. Oh. 
So here my mom gets sent away, and she literally, after four years of a very, very challenging uh, experience in this girls' reform school, she literally climbed over the wall and escaped when she was 16, 16 and a half. She just couldn't take it anymore. So you can imagine my mother had no... Uh, real experience in being cared for herself at a high level by her parents. And so uh, she escapes. She meets my father. My father's a handsome young man. She is vulnerable herself. She meets him. They fall in love. They're married within a couple of months. So here's my mother, pregnant at age 17, with oh, a baby, wow. me, yes, and uh, my mom thought that having a baby to love would be a way that she could be loved as well. And then here she is, 17, not equipped to have a baby. And um, my dad was also young, and there was womanizing and drinking and gambling and all those kinds of things. And so my mother had no real education, no skills, and now no husband. My dad had left. And So she didn't know what to do with her baby, and so she passed me from family member to family member, and there are stories that I was told later about how, you know, I was found in a playpen dirty and cold and crying and spent the first nine to ten months of my life being passed with my possessions in a cardboard box from whoever would watch me as my mom was trying to make a living as a bartender. So I know now that that is not the best way for any human to start their lives. And so finally, my dad's mom, Rosie, said, this is not acceptable. I will raise her as my own child. And she did. Oh, and so, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. So I was very blessed to have my dear Rosie, who gave me a lovely life. And yet, can you imagine what it was like to be a little girl growing up knowing that your mother was alive and that she never came to see you because that's what ended up happening was my mother couldn't deal with the pain of seeing me cry when she would drop me off at my grandmother's and so on. So one day my mother dropped me off at my grandmother's and she never, ever came back. So I knew she was alive and yet she had no contact with me whatsoever. So that is how the seeds of unworthiness got planted in me in a big way. It was like, oh, my gosh, I must have been a really bad baby or a bad little girl or something. You know, when I got older, for my own mother to live, I found out later, she lived less than 10 miles from where I lived and was not in my life at all. So you can imagine what that did. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's that's tragic for all of you. And I know that you... You've, I know that you've healed this, and I just really want to thank you for coming on and for sharing that for so yeah. many people who have that pain and hurt from their yeah. childhood. Yes. yes, and the thing is, you know, Maggie, what I've come to learn is that each one of us has our story. We have our pain. We have that big thing that has defined us in some way, and What I now know is that we each come to this planet seeking um, an exposure to how we can come up to be our highest and best selves. The problem is we don't always have the most elegant way to have that happen in the beginning. And so we're all doing the best that we know to do. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a process, though, of really being aware of all of this. And I'm sure we'll talk later about victimhood. But really, I want to say early on, to begin to understand that none of us is a victim of anything, truly. We are not victims. We are all playing our role so that at the end of the day, at the end of our lives or during our lives, really, we are working toward our own evolution so that we can come up higher and higher and higher. And all of these people, my mother for certain, played a beautiful role in that happening in my own life. And 
that also ended up happening for her because there's more to the story of my mother and me. Well, Don, that's, um, that is an amazing way to start this uh, show <laughs> and to also introduce to people the work that you have um, dedicated yourself to helping all women and people, really, but you, yeah. you know, you do talk about women, but we, I know in your heart you're talking about all people. That of course. We, we need to go from this vulnerable position of pain in, and realizing that we are venerable. We are yeah. worthy of honor and respect. And I, yeah. um, I just, I'm very glad that you came on to share your story with us. And I want to let people know that um, Dawn has some simple ways for you to work through some of the pain you may still be feeling in your heart because you you Dawn didn't go from um, through all of this and heal your heart all in the space of a day I know you were no. very hard on this and I want to make sure that the listeners get a chance to understand that this is, it is a process and it is a continuing process it really is. The happy news about that, I'm so glad you brought that up, Maggie, because the happy news about transformation is that because of the time that we're living in now, our transformation is uh, time is quickened. Um, it doesn't mean that it happens in a day, as you said. You're absolutely right about that. Yet it can happen very, very quickly because we are we are living in greater awareness now than we ever have as humans and so um, what may have we, taken us oh excuse me i'm sorry <laughs> i i'm sorry you know commercials <laughs> oh so that's do it that thought. <laughs> we'll absolutely <be> <laughs> Conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Spiritual, metaphysical, green living, psychic, alternative healing, life coaching. Do any of these or similar terms apply to your business or cause? If so, you are in a niche market with a very specific audience. Conscious Gate PR is the world's leading conscious public relations agency. With a global reach of over 4 million and growing, we offer comprehensive media campaigns to our targeted market. Learn more at ConsciousGatePR.com. Conscious Marketing for Conscious Minds. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Are you stuck? Have you tried over and over to stop an addiction, let go of self-sabotage? Do you have anxiety attacks or anger issues? Do you want to stop, let go, breathe? I can help. I have a nine-step spiritual healing path program that will lead you towards attaining balance and well-being in your life, body, and mind. Contact me. Go to MaggieChula.com and learn more. I'm here when you are ready. We are live outside the home of Joe and Rosie Goddard, where a pretty big tickle fight broke out just minutes ago. Sources say their father instigated the laughter. Let's go inside for a comment. <laughs> Apparently, they have no comment. Dads, let this be a reminder that it only takes a moment to make a moment. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council.
Welcome back. Welcome back to Mastermind with Maggie. And today we have a special guest, Dawn Morningstar, who is the author and founder of Venerable to Vulnerable to Venerable. I'm sorry, Don. Oh, no problem. That's a lot of V words. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, so, and I know that the, the hour is going to go way too quickly, and I yes. want to make sure that you get a chance to tell people, because this is an this is a whole worldwide, uh, um, what would you say, is a it's a whole process we're all going through, learning yes. how to transform ourselves. And so your book and your inspiration is very timely. I want to make sure that you get a chance to share about yes. the book that you just you just published. Yes, yes, yes. Um, thank you for that, Maggie. I my, the name of the book is Venerable Women: Transform Ourselves, Transform the World. And venerable, I like to spell this because it's not a word we use a lot. It's V-E-N-E-R-A-B-L-E, -E, venerable women. And I know before the break I had begun to talk a little bit about the time, uh, how how uh, time is really on our side for transformation right now. And um, in the book, uh, there, there are so many things that we all learn along the way, and that's why I really wanted to make sure that I put these concepts all in one place in the book, Venerable Women, Transform Ourselves, Transform the World, because some of these ideas are a little different than the way that we see the world. Um, there, many of them are, most of them, probably all of them are based on ancient wisdom. It's really, though, to have fresh inspiration. I think it's important for each of us to be inspired in new ways so that we can keep growing and expanding. So to finish that thought about um, uh, this time and how something that caused us pain or was really, really disruptive to us or shattering to us may have taken years and years and years and years of therapy uh, before the shift happened on December 21st, 2012. That's when we were living in the old paradigm that was an astrological time of living in the age of um, Pisces. It was a Piscean age, which was based more on matter and logic, and things were just a little bit harder. There was more matter there. And um, I hope that when I describe this other part, it'll make more sense. But now we are in the Aquarian age. The Aquarian age is a time of, it's a time of spirit, of collaboration, of spiritual growth and expansion. And so what that means is, things that we uncover about the pain in our lives. And each one of you listening, you know what that is. The lovely thing is now we can take that and transform it in a lot less time and even less energy than it would have taken in that old paradigm. So I find that very helpful news. So all it means is, being, yes, isn't that exciting? It's like we don't yeah. have to spend 25 years dealing with old pain, although many of us have. I know I spent many yes. years trying <laughs> to figure it out. But now we don't have to do that anymore. So that feels very hopeful to me. What do you think about that, Maggie? I I agree. We don't. I'm so glad that this is a time of quick, quicker, quickening of yes. transitions. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so one of the um, the things that uh, I think is really important to remember, though. Uh, is that and this is a bit of a qualifier because a lot of the new thought teaching and new age teaching that I learned many years ago kind of skipped over the step of feeling what we need to really feel about things. And I, I really want to mm -hmm. say when we have these hard things happen, we, we need to feel fully the pain, the disappointment, the depression, the anger, whatever it may be, because then we're honoring the emotions. And that is part of the healing process. I think when we try to stuff it and move on to the happy place right away, I think that that doesn't really 
serve us very well. So I always like to remind myself and others, feel what you need to feel about the situation and be authentic about that. Mm-hmm. And that's the first step to moving forward, truly. I, I absolutely agree. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good. Is that, yes. Is that one of the... Um, the attitudes? It, yeah. <laughs> I know oh, you good. have nine... Is it, oh, 12? Uh, there are 12. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, um, yes, there are 12 V attitudes, venerable attitudes. And these 12 V attitudes emerged over a period of time. And the way that they came about was really magical to me. Um, they started out, because I've been a master coach for, oh gosh, 20-some years now, coaching men and women, primarily, though, in groups of women. Um, What I did was I observed women um, in those groups and women in general, um, maybe famous women, women that we have all heard their names, who I thought saw themselves as venerable, saw themselves as worthy of love, honor, and respect. So I would write down qualities that I noticed about that. And then I did some research on the uh, qualities of the feminine divine. What are those qualities that um, help a woman um, live her highest and best life that are already really wired into her? So I uncovered some of those. And then I asked um, one day, and this story is in the book, people love this story, how I, there were so many things that I could see that women did that really showed that they saw themselves as venerable, that um, I thought, well, gosh, there are so many of them. How can I really get to the core of what's most important? So I stood in my kitchen, raised my arms to the heaven, I, heavens. I had been surrounded. I surrounded myself with incense and candles and everything I could think of that resonated with the energy of the feminine divine. And I, I raised my hands up and said, all the women who have ever lived and all the women yet to be born, please support me. Tell me. Tell me what it is we need to know, and I will be your voice, and I will be your scribe. And they began to speak to me immediately, and I wrote everything down that they said, and that's what crystallized the 12 venerable attitudes. That's wonderful. That's really wonderful to also to help people know that, um, you know, the whole point of this show is is to mastermind, that yes. you can mastermind even alone in your kitchen because these yes. beautiful beings of light are with you. They are listening. They are here. So thank you for sharing that. That's really yes. empowering. And, you know, Maggie, think. yes, I, I think it's also important to say that this um, this group of women who continue to help me, they're a, spir- a circle of spiritual beings who help me, and they identify themselves. They told me that I can call them the Venerable Women Collective or the Feminine Divine Collective. And, um, and I, I asked them, I said, well, okay, so what's the deal? <laughs> um, are you yeah. re- replacing angels or like what, 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 how do you fit into all of this? Because yeah. I do ask for help from angels and saints and guides and God and Jesus and Buddha and any other entities who will listen and they're all there waiting for us, you know, to help us and love us. Yes. And, and they said, we're just another group um, from the other mm-hmm. side or on the other side in the spiritual realm who loves humanity and we want to help you. And they did make me, they la- laugh. They said, you know, Dawn, we've been waiting for somebody to ask us for our help and support. <laughs> and we're so glad that you did. And I said, well, are you there just to help me? And they said, oh, heavens no. We'll help anyone. So any of you <laughs> listening, just, you know, ask them. They're a beautiful circle of women. They're loving and they're kind and they're very sacred and they're very Sometimes they're very funny, and they will help you, and they will surround you with love. I can feel their presence right now as we're and, as we're talking, and, and I'm I grateful do, I, to have them. I think the only thing I want to add to that is what I've noticed in the past year, maybe two years, is I can also feel your mother. I can feel my mother when I'm with people in in session. I can feel their mother. So these sacred yes. women. Uh, also include our own ancestors. Yes, they do. 
And I yes, think that, that is such an uplifting space to be in. That. That's a very good point. All of our mothers are in that circle of venerable women. There's no question about that, none at all. And, um, you know, Maggie, you mentioned something earlier about men and women and, um, and you know, what, why did I focus on, on women? Yeah. And, and the, the simple answer to that is I am a woman, I understand women, I coach women primarily, and I do believe that it is time for women to stand in the fullness of their power. Mm-hmm. In or, and, not, and when I say power, I don't mean power over others. I mean right. power within and power with. That's the new paradigm. Um, and I, I believe that women are wired and ready and waiting. Many women are just waiting to, to stand in the fullness of that influence so that they can affect the world for positive transformation. And, of course, there are many, many men, and I coach a lot of men. I just really wanted my focus to be on women now because we're playing a catch-up game in some regards, and I think it's time that we stop pussyfooting around, as I say, <laughs> and stand up and be the women that we came here to be. Yes, and I just want to say that um, the other thing that I know that you're going to do for us, Don, is at the after this next break, when you when we come back, do you have a few um, simple tips that the women fr- that are listening, the people that are listening, yeah. can take to help them really go from this feeling of vulnerability that's palpable to yes. really understanding. Stand in your power. We have the power to create the changes we, we wish to see in this world. So yes, thank you do. and come on back. Come back. Conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. There is no death, only a change of worlds. Chief Seattle. Deborah Livingston is an award winning intuitive psychic medium whose international services include mediumship, spiritual assessment, animal communication, and spiritual mentoring. She is a published author and a trained shaman. Deborah provides evidential messages from spirit and departed loved ones. Learn more at devlivemedium.com. That's D E B L I V medium.com. Hi, everyone. This is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. Do you want to connect to your magical child? Merge your passions and creativity? Unlock your imagination and play with the angels? Come learn the Akashic Vibration Process with me, Maggie Chula, and the master teachers of the Akasha. Together we will mastermind, exploring questions, issues, blocks, creating possibilities, then ground your creations into your current timeline. Contact me. Go to MaggieChula.com and learn more. Create new possibilities today. My name is Lola Silvestri, and I'm going to be 95 this year. I was very independent. I fell, and I had to have meals on wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. Welcome back. Welcome back to Mastermind with Maggie, and welcome to my special guest, Dawn Morningstar. 
Dawn is the author of a brand new book called Venerable Women and Transform Ourselves, Transform the World. And she's here to share some of her simple steps to help you go from feeling vulnerable to venerable, worthy of love and respect. So Dawn, help us, because you know there are many people in the world right now feeling this sense of vulnerability and hopelessness. And you and I both know that that is an illusion so yes, I, I love your message and I love your voice. How can you, how could somebody, what could somebody get from your book that could really help them in this process that they're going through? Well, in my book, Venerable Women Transform Ourselves, Transform the World, I was very conscious when I chose um, to word the subtitle the way that I did because I knew that we have to transform ourselves first in order to transform the world. And part of, and and that is the desire for many of us, is to transform the world. And yet we must start from being, coming from a place of wholeness within ourselves. And part of that wholeness is to understand the role that vulnerability does play in our growth and transformation. We, many of us have, um, you know, over the years thought that being in a vulnerable place was a bad thing. And I am reminded of the story of the Maryland blue crab. I grew up on the East Coast in Maryland. And the blue crab goes through a stage, you know, and here it is, it's a hard shell crab, and it goes through a stage where it, it go, it's out of that hard shell, it's in a very, very soft shell, they call it the soft shell stage, and that is the only way that that crab can grow into a bigger shell or have a bigger shell is to go through that very vulnerable stage where, you know, here it is, it has its, its, it's a soft shell and it's, you know, um, open to prey and bacteria and all of these, you know, things. It's a very vulnerable state for it, yet it is the only way it can grow into that larger shell. And that's how we all are. So I am inviting each of us to think of those times where we feel vulnerable to allow us to, to always remember that it's allowing us to expand and open toward that highest and best life that we all want to be living. It's a bridge from where we are to where we want to be. So let's try to understand that and welcome it and bless it and um, understand that it is simply a part of a process to a greater good. And so um, uh, before I give the tips on how we can um, really take a look at living that highest and best life, I'd like to um, say one more thing about the Beatitudes, which is the 12 Beatitudes are broken down into three categories, and this is on page 182 in the book, the entire list of them. Um, And the first four venerable attitudes have to do with a woman's relationship with herself. The second has to do with her relationship with the divine, her understanding of a higher power, whatever she calls that. And the third has to do with her relationship with others. So this is a very beautiful way to, all in one place, have 12 ways to be able to live our highest and best lives. So the very first beatitude has to do with the woman's relationship with herself, and it is this. This is the attitude number one. A venerable woman empowers herself by using inner awareness and fulfilling the needs of her body, mind, spirit, and heart. That is a good use of using our our, our vulnerability is to identify using our inner awareness how to fulfill needs that we have. Because when we fulfill the needs that we have in our body, our physical needs, the needs that our mind has, our spirit has, and our heart has, that is when we begin to live empowered lives. And so it's going from that place of vulnerability where we're feeling a little off or a little weak or we don't know what's going on, 
when we use our inner awareness and say, and this is the step number one in the three steps that I'll give today, that okay. step number one is to identify what is my disturbance, what is it that's bothering me, and name it. Be very clear here. And then once we have identified what the disturbance or the yuck feeling or the uncomfortable feeling is and we name it, then our next step is to ask, what do I need? What do I need in this moment? And then, we're, and then we go about filling that need in the best way that we can. Sometimes we can fill the need ourselves. Sometimes we need to ask for help from another human or humans. And sometimes we need to ask for help from the divine. Sometimes it's a combination of all of those things. But the idea is that we figure out what is our disturbance. We get very clear on it. We name it. Then we, um, once we've identified what you need or what we need in that situation, then we set about filling that need. And only then, when that need is filled and we begin to feel ourselves feeling more empowered because we've used our inner awareness, we've taken a step or steps to take care of what we need, only then do we go to the third step, which is to ask, what does the other need? That's where we get mixed up sometimes. We don't take the time to figure out exactly what it is that's making us feel vulnerable. What do we need? We don't take the time to do that. We mm. don't identify it clearly. And we're rushing right away to help others, to serve others, to give to others. And right. it doesn't work because then we're skipping over that very important step which is empowering ourselves and using that vulnerability for what it's intended for, which is to help us to grow and expand and to feel empowered, just like that crab does when that crab grows into its bigger shell. That's, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful three-step process. And I love that you also gave us an image because I know, and I'm sure you do, that images speak so much more to people than our words. So that image and understanding of being vulnerable, and that's the only way to grow and expand. I, yes. I, I personally love that. <laughs> I do, too, Thank because you. then we, we go from that place of, which we can easily do. I mean, we're, you know, yep. we, we are human, and it... It is very easy to go to the place of, oh, my gosh, why is this happening, and cursing yeah. our being in that in-between stage instead of saying, oh, my gosh, this is, you know, obviously feel what we need to feel, and then right. be kind of excited and say, this means that I'm on the bridge now between <laughs> where I was and where I want to be. I want to be living that empowered, happy, yes. joyful life. That's why we're here, is to experience joy, to learn, to grow, to evolve. That's us expressing the divine in the world. So, and, and you know, we, we get to have those steps of vulnerability as wonderful clues and guides to get us to that higher place. Yes, absolutely. I completely agree with you. And I do like that you um, have also shared that, feeling your feelings is yeah. very important and yes it can come and feel like pain and sadness anger sometimes but really feeling those feelings and letting them get expressed through you so you don't yeah. hold them within your energy oops I know that that is very healing that's definitely healing yeah. for the body yeah. and the mind Yes, it is. And, you know, I'm such a fan of Jerry and Esther Hicks' work. Ask and It Is Given is one of my mm -hmm. favorite books, and that did influence my book, Venerable Women, Transform Ourselves, Transform the World, um, because they really talk about the fact that that's one of the reasons 
that we want to have this human experience is because we want to feel human emotions. We want to feel emotions. And so we can't go to a place of saying some emotions are good and desirable and others are bad and wrong and we should avoid them at all costs. We mm. need to honor all of the emotions. It's just like, you know, in, in, in Rumi's poem where he talks about, you know, each, each thing being a guest and to welcome them all. And so I say honor all of the emotions. And Carla McLaren is also a wonderful. She's written a book called um, The Message in, in Our Emotions um, and, or What Our Emotions Are Trying to Tell Us. And um, that's another way of saying, yes, we need to feel these emotions and feel what we're feeling. And the other thing that feelings do or that feelings um, help us with, and maybe we can talk about this at another time, but feeling is also um, what helps us to create and manifest is by, you know, obviously we're feeling what we need to feel about situations, but then we use feeling what we'd like to see happening as a way to create that and attract that to us too. So feelings are just, I'm such a fan of feelings. Yes. It's like when people would say, oh, you're being so emotional, like that's a bad thing. Oh, no, yeah, I remember that's a that. good thing. You know, it's a good thing. Should, and yeah, yeah, or you're yeah. too sensitive. Yeah. Right, you're too yeah. sensitive. Well, uh, Dawn, yeah. I, I, just want, I just want to remind you, or I want to remind us, you and I both, that this hour just flies by. It's incredible. But we're about to come up onto our last segment. And yeah. um, so if there's any last things that you want to make sure that we share with our listeners so that they so that they really get and cement this message, I would appreciate you thinking about that during this break. And for all of you listening, please do come back because we have one more segment and I'm sure we'll wrap this up in a way that's loving and empowering. So come on back. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Have you ever wondered, what is the purpose of life? How can I do more, have more, be more? Do you want to talk to your angels, your higher wisdom? Have you tried? But here you are. I invite you to come take a class in the Akashic Vibration process. Learn the language of your soul. Enhance your soul connection. Expand your soul vibration. Contact me. Go to MaggieChula.com and learn more. Let me help you interpret the language of your soul. It's me, your heart. High blood pressure is serious. And if you think I'm just going to keep ticking away, you're wrong. I can quit whenever I want, but I like my job. Just treat me better. Maybe we can do some exercise on occasion. After all, we're in this together. Don't let your heart quit on you. High blood pressure can lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Find out how at heart.org slash blood pressure. A message from the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. Well, 
it's hard to believe, but this hour has just flown by, and we are here talking with Dawn Morningstar, who is an amazing woman, definitely very inspirational, and also she is working with her light and her love to share with us this movement that's called the Venerable Women, Venerable Women's Movement. Um, Dawn, can you talk a little bit about that? Because I know your book is wonderful. I hope everybody goes to get it. But you, I, you also have a movement that's growing over this and came before, actually, the book. Yes. Um, the movement came about as a way to really inspire women all over the world to stand in the fullness of their power. Because when women do better, everyone around them does better. So I really invite any person listening, man or woman, I have many men who are part of this movement as well, and I'm pretty sure my next back book is going to be Venerable Men because there are so many venerable men out there. But I just want to say that one of the ways to understand the movement is to read the book. Um, it is available on Amazon, uh, Venerable Women Transform Ourselves, Transform the World, because then once people read that, then they can understand or um, decide if it resonates with them, if the message resonates with them. And if it does, go on to the VenerableWomen.com website and just click on Join the Circle, and then each person who does that can become a part of this movement. It's growing by leaps and bounds every day because we know that this is the time. And I also, um, Maggie, would we have time for me to share a message that I got from the collective, the Venerable Women Collective, for the listening audience? Do we have time um, for that? Ab absolutely. Absolutely. All right, I wonderful. Hope. <laughs> so I would say, um, everyone listening, take a breath in and feel your presence. Feel the divine presence in you as you. And take these words deep into your soul. Take them into your heart. Take heart, dear one. Your life is about to shift in a way that will make you happier, more joyful, and more whole than you have ever been in your life. Allow that. Open yourself to that. You are here for a reason. We need you. We need you whole and happy. Allow. We support you. And we love you. This is your time. That was beautiful, Don. Thank you. Thank you. So I also wanted to say that in my book, I tell the rest of the story of what happened with my mother and me, and it's quite mm -hmm. a magical story. I didn't want to leave that piece unfinished. Um, okay. And so hopefully that will inspire your listeners uh, to see how everything is possible. Everything is possible. We're living in a time of wonder, a time of joy, a time of instant manifestation, a time of healing, a time of expansion and growth. And venerable women are a part of this because we remind each other and we remind the world that that's who we came here to be. And this is an exciting time to be alive. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't listen to all the other stuff. It's not true. That's the illusion. The truth is this is joy. This is the human experience at its fullest. And we are being supported from all directions. And Maggie, I know that your work is such an important part of this. I've known it for years, and you have personally supported me for many years to help me to come up to this place where I can speak so confidently about the joy that we are all able to experience. Thank you, Dawn. 
And thank you so much for bringing your inspiration onto this show. Um, I just want to share a couple of things with the listeners, and that is I want them to remember that they can join us on the air. Um, you can find this podcast on iTunes. Um, uh, there's also on YouTube. So you can listen to it again when it's convenient for you. And also to send me any questions or issues that you would like to hear so that we can continue to share and grow and help everyone feel the magnificent presence of God within their life. So you can send me a message. Find me on Facebook as Maggie Chula, Psychic Channel, Spiritual Teacher. And I'd love to have you like my page and come on over and join us as we learn new ways to face the world and create love, light, and a healthy lifestyle for yourself and for those you do love. Next week, it's funny we're talking about um, the different, where we're in right now, the stage we're in right now, the Piscean um, stage, because next week my um, special guest is Kathy Beal. She is an Ohm Times expert and also a professional astrologer. Our topic will be, how can I get help with my life through the use of astrology? Because if you're like me, it feels like the moon is always full, um, Venus is, <laughs> or Mars is always retrograde, so she's going to come on, and it's also one of my favorite days. It's Halloween, so be sure to listen in then. And so, Don, do you have any last, I know you, How I don't know how you can... <laughs> top those beautiful <laughs> words that fl that flowed through you but if you have one thing that you'd like to leave with the listeners what would that be you're so inspiring thank you Where can thank they you find for you? this opportunity yes um at venerablewomen.com and i'll leave you these words we transform the world by transforming ourselves moment by moment standing together with others like a forest of wise trees, bearing witness and contributing to the evolution of humanity. And the collective reminds us, we are your roots, your trunk, your branches. Sit in the shade of our blossom tree and delight in the world you imagine. That is absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm going to go you. get that, copy that book right away. Actually, I just read it I'm from the last from, page, so that's where I'm it came from. I'm going to get it from you, and I want it autographed. Thank you very much. Wonderful, <laughs> So thank you, wonderful. Don, for being on the show. And I want to really remind our listeners that this, this show is for you, and I do want you to feel empowered, inspired, and Listening to the show, go from having a problem to feeling you've really got some steps to help you move forward in your life and to start to plan out what you're going to do because we really are all in this together. And Dawn is so absolutely correct. We flow from the same source. We flow yeah. from that same vibration. We are all connected. And in today's world, you can go from vulnerable to feeling really worthy of respect and showing that light, shining your light out and sharing it with others. Because the people around us all have their own light. Let's try to remember that. We're all connected to the light. We all have that spark of love and light within us. And we are all connected so as Dawn is this beautiful light in her kitchen, I love that vision, in her kitchen, calling in all the energies of women <laughs> from the past, women for the future. Let's remember we can do that too. That's yes, masterminding. We can. Yes. Mm -hmm. That so is you, masterminding for sure. <laughs> it is, and I, I think that the other thing I want people to take away is it is good to network with people of certainly get a group together and mastermind with them. But please remember to call in the beings that you want to talk to. Maybe for yeah. you, it's St. Germain. Um, it could be your mother, your grandmother, somebody that you truly loved and resonated with. You can call them in. 
just like Don yeah. did, just like I do. You don't have to be certified as a psychic. You don't have to be a life coach. You can be right where you are today. And I, I will think I what I'm going to take away from this is the vision of this of the crab. I yeah. I don't come from Maine. I didn't know that story. The blue shelled crab who's most yeah. vulnerable, and that's how you expand. I just thought that was wildly inspiring and just what I needed to hear. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, I always remind people to be venerable, you know, to stay venerable, to get venerable, and to know that with these beings that you mentioned, Maggie, um, and it, ca it can also be nature that is our inspiration. It can be, oh, yeah. really be anything. And the thing is that we have to ask because of our we free will. Ask. We have yep. to ask. They can't just come in and, you know, I, I don't believe, at least that's my belief, is that they no, can't just come in too. without us asking them or giving our permission. Ask. So ask. Ask. Yes. I love you, Don. I will see you I love again. you too, Maggie. <laughs> Thank you Thank all you. for listening. Have a great week.